All right. Looks like we've had a few questions pop up in the Q&A box for you, Dr. Hoffman. Okay. Um, let's start with the first one. Um, uh, I would like to see how much it is studied in the emergency setting. That pertains to um, to what we've seen in, uh, in the last, in the outlook. Um, there is a uh, few studies, actually, that studied it in an emergency setting and studied it with, uh, for example, triple rule out CT as well. And as you would expect, there's higher rates of rejections, um, but it is still feasible. But we are missing prospective validation evidence for that, really. So that is something that is the work that still has to be done. We have retrospective evidence, but we need prospective evidence. And then another question was, um, is there a formula to calculate flow? Well, that is actually, um, as I said, it's uh, if you look it up, it's the Navier-Stokes equation, which is a highly complicated equation um, and that takes into account um, uh, basically the the flow uh, and and simulates hyperemia and then uh, normal uh, blood flow basically. Um, but it's nothing you can you can just calculate on your calculator um, on the CT, unfortunately, which is basically why they use supercomputers for it. And there's another question that which is uh, I think very very important and very interesting. How could foot on counting impact FFR, especially with stented patients? And um, that is uh, a very good question. And that is exactly what you saw in the uh, in these outlook images. This is foot on counting data, right? And this is what um, photon counting CT brings us at 0.2 millimeters and it's very high uh, resolution and that actually enables us to to image stent patients. So usually for stents you would say ah oh, CCTA is probably not ideal but in we have pre preliminary data that the high spatial resolution actually lets you see stent struts and can you can actually see instant restenosis. And again, if you look at what are the cardiologists doing, um, they have been doing FFR for stents for a long time and they are actually re-evaluating um, their uh, intervention success with, with invasive FFR. So that is something that is entirely unvalidated yet, but is something that is a super interesting topic because we're just learning how we can actually su uh, sufficiently image stented patients with CCTA, and then applying FFR to that is, is extremely interesting. Another uh, interesting question, do nitrates and vasodilation influence CTFFR measurements? Um, yes and no. Um, you could think so, um, because uh, if you give nitrates and vasodilation, that is something that we have said we need maximum hyperemia, but you only you get the the image and you image it after your your institutional protocol basically, which in most centers I think will use uh, nitrates um, in order to get a, a better evaluable uh, CCTA image. And but the hyperemia is simulated by the uh, by the equation. It is not so. It does not influence that equation. So you do need nitrates usually in order to get the nice image, which you can then process, but it does not influence the, the uh, equation or the uh, measurements from that. And uh, then th there's one question pertaining to the cost of the software um, that depends on, your, on the vendor, of course. Um, you can estimate around, uh, it's on a case base, it's around, uh, $1,000 per patient. And um, then as I talked about, um, some countries are quite far ahead with reimbursement for that. So that's not a problem. Um, other countries like the one I'm living in, um, there's no reimbursement at all. And then $1,000 per, pa per patient is uh, quite a lot. And that will um, basically render it not feasible to, to perform FFR for every patient. But then again, um, as I said, there's only two vendors right now, and um, that uh, makes it quite quite the small market. And hopefully, that will expand and prices might drop a little. And what can happen while doing CTFFR? Um, basically, the same things as uh, as 
their normal CCTA, right? Because it's all post-processing. And um, we've, we've got the evidence that it is safe to defer patients when CTFFR is fine. The only thing that um, you have to be careful is use it in the, for the right indications, use it only in intermediate um, stenosis. And um, then of course, if there's, um, if there's serial stenosis, for example, then these equations just don't take that into account properly. So then that might, um, that might lead to, to wrong measurements and that can then falsify uh, your findings. So if you move in between the boundaries that we've set by the um, by uh, by the evidence, um, it is safe to use CTFR. There's really nothing um, procedure related that can happen because it's just the normal CCTA. Um, and there's one question: if I uh, can refer to any available articles or data available, um, yes, sure. Um, I encourage you to to rewatch and scan every article. Um, um, there's quite a lot of uh, data there. Um, if you want to have like a, a quick overview, um, I, I can recommend heavily recommend um, this uh, this re review here in radiographics, um, which is really practical and and problem focused and and gives you uh, um, gives you um, an idea of how to use it. Oh, you mean in regard to PCT? Um, well, there's PCT and FFR. There's really not much evidence out there. That's a problem, right? Um, actually, there's basically no evidence uh, out there that I know of. Um, but uh, for PCT, PCT in general, um, we're just learning the first few steps um, of how that impacts um, coronary artery disease. And I think there's um, there's a few centers uh, that do it and are really scientifically active. I'm happy to say that that uh, the Mainz University Medical Center is one of them. Um, then I think uh, Zurich is also one that is uh, very, very active in investigating that. And then the uh, the MUSC, so Medical University of Southern Carolina, is also very active. Um, so if you look uh, sort of uh, for those authors, um, you will probably um, have a pretty good overview. Image reconstruction parameters um, are not very um, strict, really. Um, most vendors will accept your standard reconstruction parameters, um, and they just uh, recommend, or of course, they have some quality checks in place. So if you have large step artifacts or stuff like that, um, they will reject the study and, and cannot perform it far. Um, but you don't have to uh, do super high resolution or uh, spectral or anything like that. You can do it's basically just your standard of care and you send it to uh, to the to the software vendor and they will perform everything else.